Inside the Chamber is brought to you by presenting sponsor, Naperville Bank and Trust. Welcome to Inside the Chamber. This is our way to bring passionate and knowledgeable chamber members to the community through a healthy dialogue about meaningful topics that matter to our business community. The chamber mission of moving business forward towards an engaged, thriving community happens when we are your advocate and your resource. And Inside the Chamber allows us to do and be just that. Today's program discusses the critical path to business startup success. We have brought together two sides of that startup coin. We have Ute Westfall, the director of director and program manager at the Illinois Small Business Development Center at the College of DuPage. She's going to talk to us about how you take your business idea and make it a reality using the resources inside our community. And we have someone who decided to take her business into her own hands and start an upscale modern lifestyle magazine in Naperville. We have Ashley South, CEO of Blue House Publishing Inc. and creator of Main and Lux Magazine. She's going to tell us what it takes to start a business and what type of heavy lifting you can expect. Ladies, it's a pleasure to have you. And we are going to dive right into the million dollar question every person dreaming of starting their own business knows. Where do I begin? Where do I start? Can you give us some information? Find help. <laughs> Don't do it alone. I think that's uh, probably one of the, the immediate responses I have when I get that question, and I get that question a lot. I always say you've got to find like-minded people, either a business owner who has done it before you, or a mentor, or come to the Small Business Development Center. That's what we do for free, our service is free, and we help people to understand, do I have a good idea? Sometimes you have a good idea, but the question is, do others think the same way? You may be passionate, but do you have an audience? Do you have a market? And that's where we start to, under to help somebody understand, how does my passion look in a broader market? And how do people get a hold of you if they're interested in having some of those initial conversations? Oh, you can just Google. This is not an advertising for Google. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google SBDC. We have 42 centers all over Illinois, and we are located in Glen Allen, so DuPage County and Naperville is our wheelhouse. So if you just look up SBDC for Small Business Development Center, we come up. And you can get a hold of us by emailing me, that would probably be the easiest. My last name, Westfall, my first initial U, <laughs> at cod.edu. Perfect, and Ashley, we were talking earlier, I, I love this advice, you know, don't do it alone. Tell me, you know, how did you start? Yeah, so I ended up reaching out to the people that I was calling my constituency. Didn't make sense, um, would you help me out? Uh, the other thing that I ended up doing is sort of research, just a lot of research. How much does it cost to start something? What kind of resources are needed? Who could I reach out to to then work with me? And does it make sense for me to even launch this? So I looked actually kind of around. We found that um, one of the smaller publications in Naperville ended up shutting down. And I thought, you know what, could I actually run that same magazine? I wasn't sure. And then I started looking into it and thought, okay, well, what are the things that perhaps I wanted to change about that? How could I do it differently? So I found that actually looking around, doing research within the community and seeing that there was a vacuum that I could potentially fill ended up starting me down that path. From there, what I decided to do was just start documenting and organizing my thoughts around it, reaching out to, put to people to ask them for help. Um, I actually reached out to a local magazine editor uh, within another community, and he offered to mentor me and give me some contacts. So from there, again, documenting different costs, what's the feasibility, and how long could I actually then take to, to be successful uh, right off the bat because certainly I wasn't looking to spend a year um, losing money and not necessarily finding the success that I was looking to achieve. What is a typical timeline? I, what's normal or is there no normal? 
Well, it depends where you're coming from and what experience you have, either in your field or like Ashley, I love it that you said I reached out to like-minded people. That's exactly what I, what I meant. I would say it's about a year until you have a feel for the business and have an idea whether your idea was the right one or may, you may have to adjust. I'm not saying that, and I see that a lot, I'm not saying that you need to stop when you realize it doesn't work. No, you adjust. You look at your business model, you look at your market, you look at your product, and you say, hmm, it doesn't really, doesn't really take off three months, four months, and you're like hanging a little bit. That means you need, to, you need to pull back to the drawing board and say, okay, what do I need to adjust? What do I need to change? Where do I need to go? That process is a minimum of one year until you really have realized I'm in it. Now I have this this um, this feeling of having a following and having customers and having positive feedback from the market. But I would say three years, five years, and you have proven yourself in the market. So uh, the first year, I don't know, I'm sure Ashley has, <laughs> has an idea about that. I think the first year usually is a lot of trial and error, trying things out, talking to people until you know this is it. So I want to comment on that, actually. I started thinking about the sections within the magazine. And I thought, OK, if we're going to do a lifestyle magazine, you've got food, you've got events, you've got the social scene. But I also wanted to include the library. We have this excellent resource here in Naperville. And something that's just part of my brand and my ethos is also giving back to the community. So that was the other thing that I wanted to incorporate. So when I started kind of listing that off, I went to the library to ask them about their resources and they introduced me to Neighbor Launch. So I talked to uh, Kent, who at the time was the business librarian. The reins have now been handed over to Lindsay Harmon. And we're actually doing a piece on her, how to launch your business through Neighbor Launch. They talk with you about the lean startup. They talk with you about budgeting. They ended up hooking me up with a SCORE mentor. Now, SCORE is a 501c3. You're probably very familiar with them. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm working with a man named Chuck Turek. Now, Chuck has given me some really fantastic advice as well, but really it started with those sections and thinking to myself, how could I actually leverage a lifestyle premier magazine and also help the community and give back? So what I see is a very nice upscale package that's also a community resource. And trying to fit that model in, you were talking about a year success, I came from corporate America and what I'm finding actually is that I don't have that same brand recognition that I had when I was associated with my former company. So having to build that brand and putting myself into the community was something that I actually wasn't exactly ready for. Um, even being invited to this, I was so nervous about it because I have never done anything like this before. So thinking through that success and thinking through how long it was going to potentially t take um, was honestly a splash of water in my face. Um, I think I didn't recognize how much you have to kind of overcome in order to build that. Having the research behind you, having the folks to champion you, networking, those are all things that I've ended up realizing within the last couple of months are absolutely critical to success. Having that organization and keeping track of those contacts that you've made and then keeping them warm. So my goal is actually to turn a profit by January and find that success sooner rather than later because I just feel like I've set these goals out for myself. Now for better or worse, I would like to produce a very good and quality product, leveraging the advisory board that I've pulled together and all of the rest of those resources so that I can have that success and actually put a little feather in Chuck's mm -hmm. cap. Well, it sounds like something you guys are, both of you have really talked about is flexibility, is the need to pivot when necessary, the need to understand, hey, I came into this with this idea and maybe it's changed. I mean, Ashley, how many times has your overall idea changed, but the little different pieces of that have you had to adjust? So funny you should say that. We started off with one name, 
and I ended up doing some research. I actually went to a law firm to have them look into the trademark because I wanted to make sure that when I was launching a product that my product was sound. So we went out, um, did some research around that space together and found that we couldn't use that name. I came up with another name. The other name was actually turned down because it sounded too similar to a product that was in Chicago. <laughs> So we went back to the drawing board, and at the time, the lawyer who was working with us was going to go on vacation for a week, and I needed to turn something around by a particular deadline. And so we had to submit 80 names we ended up coming up with um, by, it was like 24 hours after my second name had been rejected. So Maine and Lux came to me at like two o'clock in the morning when I could not sleep thinking about the fact that I needed to get this in. It tested well with my group uh, who had been working with me, um, and that was one of the things that we had to pivot. I had actually already ordered some swag thinking I was going to launch under this one name um, and ended up changing that. And so by virtue of that name change, we also had a little bit of a branding change around mm -hmm. that. And she's, that, this, <laughs> this is not unique, right? No, no, it's not. And it's really, it really speaks to what's happening out there. When you asked me, how long does it take to start a business? And I say, well, it's about a year. I did not include all the time on the drawing board. And that is what we do when somebody comes to us and says, I have an idea or I just started, but I need to talk to somebody. We take somebody like Ashley through the whole process on paper in a conversation without the person having, having spent a dime having gone to a lawyer, having gone through the trademark issues, so that some of the problems can actually be avoided by having somebody who has been there before to talk about it, talk it through. What about this name? Let's do a quick check. What about this name? Now there's a business in California that's pretty much in your industry. You shouldn't. So we help uh, people get to that point where they have the elements set up to be able to say, now I'm going to start. And that's what I mean when the year starts. But I think thinking it through, having somebody poking holes and saying, hey, have you thought about this? And are you really sure? You said you, have, you run this by a group, so a group, I assume, of mentors and people in the industry. That's what we call market research. You have to go with your idea into the field and ask some people who are not necessarily raving fans like friends and family. <laughs> they should be your fans anyways. So sometimes, <laughs> well, don't you think? Yes. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to take the brave step outside of your comfort zone and ask some people who may give you some hard feedback. But let me tell you, that feedback before you get started is really gold. That's really gold because it prevents you from going in a direction that might not turn out to be a good one. Well, I have so many more questions, but we want to hear a word from our sponsor and we will be back in a minute. Naperville Bank and Trust has the expertise, knowledge and experience to help you reach your business goals. They provide all the tools that you would ask uh, that we as a growing business need of a bank. Most importantly to me, it's a, a great personal relationship we have with Tom and John and, and our bankers. It was the best thing we could have done in banking. And banking can be very cold. What the bank brings to us is, is that warm feeling when you come into the bank and people say, hi, Greg. It's about being part of the community again, about being a name again, about having credit for who your business is instead of just being, well, instead of just being a number. Naperville Bank and Trust, bring it home. Stay in the know, at home or on the go with NCTV 17 News Update. This quick recap of everything happening in and around town will be delivered straight to your email inbox for free. Sign up today. Welcome back. I'm here with Ashley and Uday, and I want to get into one big question that we haven't hit yet, funding. You know, we have this great idea. We've done the market research. Now, how do I make it a reality to pay for the products I want and, you know, 
end up making it a profitable business? How do you even get started? Great question. I hate that question and I love the question. <laughs> I hate it because it's a really rough answer and I love it because it's one of the most important questions you can ask when starting a business. And there are some numbers out there. On average, a startup starts with about $20,000 in the bank. That's kind of roughly a number. But I can tell you from my perspective as a, at the Small Business Development Center, we have businesses that start with $3,000 cash in the bank. And that is the first investment, the owner investment. You know, remember um, this uh, camera that... Um, the pro camera that launched about, I don't know, that I reveal my age, how old I am. They started with about $700 cash in the bank. So times have changed, of course, but sometimes it's not that you need a huge amount, but the owner needs to have some cash available. Nobody invests in your business if you haven't. So you have to have some skin in the game until somebody else says, okay, we're going to pitch in and you have to have a good model. So somebody needs to see that you have thought about it, that you have a good grip on your financials, and that you understand what you're doing. And then the doors open. But what does not exist, I can, if somebody pre prove me wrong, <laughs> I would be happy to be proven wrong. A startup cannot start on zero owner investment. There is nobody who will give, there is no free money, there is nobody who will invest. So the owner is the first person that has to come up with the first investment. There's a reason why we call that seed money. But from then on, there are opportunities. If you have a good model and it looks like you will be successful because you have thought it through, bankers at the moment, not in the last two years, but at the moment, banks are interested in investing. They want to help the small business community. So if you have a good model, you put it in writing and it's, it's understandable, it's logical, and it's justifiable, you will be able to have a bank loan. The Small Business Administration uh, has a 7A loan program that is definitely um, better than pretty much any other loan programs out there. There are grant opportunities for women there are grant opportunities for veterans. So there are organizations that their own mission, their, their own mission is to pool money and give it back to the small business community. But you have to have a concept. You have to have proven yourself, done the market research, have your first sale. You have to be in the business actively until somebody else says, yeah, we'll give you money. And there can be a loan, there can be a grant. Sometimes it's an investor, sometimes it's somebody who says, if you start a brewery, that's a big thing at the moment. <laughs> um, there are a lot of investors out there who want to be part of it. There is an opportunity. I think those are the three big ones. Bank loan, SBA, preferably an SBA loan because the terms are better, grants if you are in business, and uh, investment opportunities. And Ashley, how have you taken advantage of some of these? Kind of give us your firsthand experience. Yeah, so a couple things. I started off actually looking at my break-even analysis. What were my costs associated to it? And how much did I need to sell in order to then make sure that I was able to keep my doors open? From that, I ended up backing into pricing and having to do some comparative analysis within the competition. So we're actually priced 20 to 30% lower than some of the other ones in the area um, as for the smaller magazines. The thing that I wanted to do then is talk about self-funding, is thinking, all right, well, how much do I need to, to actually fund myself? And what can I go to have uh, partnerships to then get things with people that I can then give something in return? So for instance, I'm working with Megan Drain, Firefly Nights Photography. She signed on for 12 months. We are doing a, an advertisement for her. We also have a feature in there with her. And she is working with us at a reduced rate. So that still lowers my costs. So right now I am self-funding. I am 
very much watching the purse strings. The things that I have learned specifically are not to actually get over my skis with any kind of money and to actually negotiate a little bit better. I want to pay people for their services, so I don't negotiate on those services. If someone tells me something is X, I pay X, and then see if we could do something in the future that would actually then extend that contract and try to extrapolate that out. So for me, it's about building a brand and building those relationships um, and not making myself go broke in the process. Because I feel like we have a very solid business foundation, I am going out to the community and selling. Now, the, somebody said to me, Ashley, you can't sell based on your amazing business foundation. You need to have the marketing behind it. You need to actually look the part. And I agree, um, but I can also really talk about how solid the business foundation is. I came from finance. We, I ran a particular product for a large banking financial firm. And so for me, I think that that is really the cornerstone of what I'm trying to achieve is to make sure that my product is solid. And that would make you fundable at some point. And I think that is a success secret. That is a secret sauce to success for a startup company. What you did to self-fund, negotiate, make sure that the service that you buy in are well negotiated, so you have really a lean startup, you're making yourself bankable because you will need bank support at some point. I can hear that already. And that you have a financial background is another piece of your, of your secret sauce because understanding financials in business is key. You're talking secret sauce. What else is in there? You know, I'm sitting at home. I have this great idea. I've done my market research. I've talked to outside of my family. I've talked to a, a group who will give me constructive criticism. Worked on funding. What's next? Is it just get in and do it? You know, what, what else do people who are going through this really need to think about and consider? Yeah, at some point you have to jump. <laughs> at, some point, at some point you have to stop preparing for it. At some point, you have to stop thinking about it. At some point, you have to go out and put yourself out there. And you said one thing that really rang with me, Ashley, when you said, um, I have to look the part. I have to be my business. You have to be your business, and you have to go out and present your business. So that's where the chamber comes in. The chamber is a great opportunity to practice. Practice your pitch. Who are you? What do you do? And you have to do that because as a business owner, you are the number one person that represents your business, you are the business, people look at you as the business, so you have to practice to present, you have to practice to explain what actually do you do and what's in it for the person you're talking to. And that is something that uh, I think the chamber has a lot of opportunities for somebody to do that, to be the business. Absolutely. <laughs> the um The Chamber in general has been fantastic. I've reached out to so many people. Um, honestly, just even having the Chamber logo on the bottom of my email, I think has returned or has gotten me uh, emails in return. I've reached out to Ross Creative Works, for instance, and in working with Catherine, she has given me several hours of her time to help get me to that next level. And it has made all of the difference in the world. So from that end, again, with the networking and talking with people, the things I'm able to do then is to distribute 10,300 issues of this magazine to the wall or to the boundaries within Naperville. Uh, right now we're going to be at 10,300, but we are expecting to scale that up. And so with that distribution comes a marketing opportunity for a lot of people as well. So again, if you're thinking about a small business, for me it was how can, how can I give something back while not directly paying someone, but by offering something that they would still value? And so it's that sort of intrinsic give and take. And I think that's really important just in our business community here in the Naperville area is that community involvement. You know, I feel like our community really values businesses that do give back in one way or another. You know, we don't want a business to come in and just be a flash in the pan. We're here. Here's our marketing goodbye. We want businesses who give back, and I feel uh, that we rally around and we support them when they support us. It's kind of what you were talking about. You know, you have to be your own best advocate first, but then having other people come on board. All right, last 
words here. What are your pieces of advice for someone who's getting ready to do this? What is something you have learned that you wish someone would have told you? Really take a step back and think about what your goals are and stay true to those goals. Have some humility around it. Ask for help and listen. I would say that if you are thinking about starting a business, make sure that you do your research and then champion that business because it is going to be your baby. For me, I am just breathing Maine and Lux all the time. And I think that when I go and I talk with someone, they can feel that passion. And so to keep that passion, I think is extremely important, even when you're weathering a storm. Awesome. And what about you? A piece of advice you wish that everyone knew as, you know, they've got this idea coming up in their head before they really took the jump. All of that, what <laughs> Ashley said. And I think the passion is really important. You have to keep the passion alive because it, it um, carries you through the ups and downs because businesses have ups and downs and you have to remember why you're in it. What is it that you started this in the beginning? But that's all the fun part. But there are some parts that where you really, as a business owner, have to be aware of. You have to really quickly learn to be a CEO. And if you have never had a role before, you need to learn. You need to be decisive. You need to be able to make decisions. You have to have hard conversations. You need to learn to negotiate. And you need to understand to run a business from a financial perspective. In the end, everything you do, every presentation you make, every pitch you do, it's all about the bottom line. It's all about how does that bring my business forward. And as a business owner, there is no there is no saying no to numbers. That does not exist anymore. If you were bad in math, that doesn't matter. This is not about math. It's about understanding how the numbers come together. If I do this, what impact does that have over here? If I do something over here, what impact does that have over here? And that is where you build a successful, sustainable, and hopefully socially responsible business. I like that. It, is it all boils down to numbers. One piece of advice I was given was it's not personal, it's just business. And I feel like when you're so passionate, when it's your passion, passion project, sometimes it can be hard not to take things mm -hmm. personally. But you're right, numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both so much for joining me here today. Uh, really appreciated your insight and fantastic resources you mentioned. We will make sure to get them up on our website, neighborville.net, as well as at NCTV. Thank you again so much. And thank you for watching Inside the Chamber. Watch us each month and remember that we are your resource for knowledge, power, and business forward programs that stand up for you and stand up for our community. See you next month. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Inside the Chamber is brought to you by presenting sponsor, Naperville Bank and Trust.